Um, bit of a different video today. Um, bit of a DIY one, probably the first one I've ever done really. Um, we have had a log burner in our house for, well, since we moved in. We moved in in 2013 and it's never had any attention at all. Um, the previous owners, I'm sure, cleaned it at some point, but I don't know when that is. They should be cleaned annually. We use it throughout the winters, so it's definitely in need of a clean. Um, obviously, I'd prefer to do it myself. I think uh, the investment in the kit will probably uh, pay for itself. But I'm a bit concerned as to what the liner is. I don't know what's up there. The traditional brush that I've sort of looked at, sort of a big thick brush, I was concerned that that would dislodge a liner and so it could be a costly mistake. So I was looking around to see what was available and this product really caught my eye um, because I think that's going to be pretty gentle to the liner and it will whisk um, the soot and debris out and it's a chimney cyclone. Um, I, I think there's one company that distributes them in the UK I'll put a couple of links to their web store below. Um, but yeah, I think this is probably quite a good option for the DIY market. It sort of follows, well, it will sort of be led up by the the top there. So a rubber, hard rubber ball. And uh, it's on flexible nylon rods with nice little push connectors. Um, so it should be quite easy to do. Um, so what we'll do is I will cut in a little unboxing so you'll see exactly what you get in the kit. Let's see how look around the together. box and see what comes with the kit. Um, so obviously this is a chimney cyclone, um, fairly unique um, kit which I thought was really well suited to home user. I think it will be pretty uh, foolproof and easy to use. Um, just looking at the front here, uh, eight flexible rods. Well I've actually got a few more than that because this is a 12 meter kit. So more than enough to do um, my two-story sort of 1970s house. Um, but I thought maybe, I'd, I thought eight would be too few. 10 would probably be okay, but if I get 12, well, maybe I can lend it to people and uh, do a different sort of size house. Um, chimney cyclone head, uh, rotary chuck connector, and some plastic sheeting to, uh, to allow you to get going with. So let's have a look on the other sides of boxes. So you can see there you've got the uh, flexible um, nylon rods, I think they are. Um, I guess this is saying circular or square flues. Down at the bottom here, it shows it can go around bends. Now there's a, I don't think there's any bends in my chimney, um, but if you are taking it around bends, uh, having read, read the instructions online, you've got to keep it moving um, so you don't put any uh, undue stress in the components as they spin because obviously this is going to be turned by an electric or a rechargeable drill so you can it well you should be careful not to overstress it if you know there's kinks in your chimney on the side here eight meters of rod removes more debris than traditional brush and, re and reduces sweeping time click together which we'll take a look at new bristle design um, which is I think really important. I, th I think that'll be because uh, I don't know quite how my chimneys or flues lined. Uh, having that will be really helpful. And then some plastic sheeting. And the plastic sheeting isn't to go on the floor. Well, I don't think it is. Uh, it's not to go on the floor. It is to go on the um, around the fire, and you cut a little slot in it, and then you keep all the dust and debris within your um, wood burner, or at least that's the plan. Okay, well let's see what's in the box. So, we've got a pack of 8 metre units and then a few more lengths to bring it up to the 12, which is the kit I bought. Got the uh, plastic sheeting, fairly uh, standard, fairly thick gauge, better than a carrier bag or a bin bag, that's for sure. And then you've got the really interesting stuff. You've got the head unit with the chuck adapter. And in here, I think we've got the filaments. So let's quickly open those up. Here's the filaments. And they've actually got little collars on them for a positive connection, which is quite cool. Open this guy up. Okay, 
this is the head. So I think it's a case of undoing the, the bolt at the top with the Allen key. In fact, the bolts are already out. So you offer these guys up through these little channels. And you pinch down from above. Okay, so the, the collars pass each other, so I guess clamping down on the top pinches the one below. Yeah, that's pretty firmly in there. Let's do it again on the bottom. I don't think there's much risk of this falling out the chimney. Right, so that's the, the head put together. Now obviously these are pretty long, I would have said that's a good 12 inches isn't it? So that's for a pretty wide um, sort of flue. I think my flue is about 6 inches, I think it's about that wide. So once I've given it a trial run I think I'll be cutting these back uh, to get the perfect fit so they're not all bent up and it's a little bit less resistance. But we'll go through initially with these and just make sure it doesn't widen out. Uh, past the log burner and obviously these can be replaced these are available online so uh, yeah really simple and I think probably quite sort of uh, gentle on the liner because I don't want to tear that liner out or displace anything I literally don't know how it's been put together so that's the head onto the, the rods these rods have a clip connector with little spring buttons in, so that's a chuck key and each one's got another spring connector at the tip and on the other end there's a little socket and you just pop the spring connector in like that nice positive connection, positive connection there. there and really um, so much so that you probably want to find a little tool to give it a poke out with um, for the ease, I'm going to see if I can do it with the uh, bottom of my Swiss Army knife. And out they pop. Dust sheet down, so easy. The up. burner is open as you can see. Um, generally needs a bit of care and attention, a little crack here. Um, we've re glued the, uh, the seal around there at some point. And what I'd really like to do is lift this off. Um, but I can't seem to get it off, so whatever we're going to put around the front, whatever sheeting we're going to put around the front, um, will have to be uh, sort of to enclose the whole thing. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is take out the baffle at the top. Course, come out. I had to take out a couple of the um, sort of ceramic fireproof blocks at the side. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a quick going over with the Henry, take out all the dust and debris just so we can find out exactly to put in the first rod. Is. Obviously you need the first rod in before you can put any sheeting and then you just poke, poke the end part of the rod out between the sheeting. So we're going to stick that up there. Um, little push connector which I'll have shown you in the unboxing. Um, but each time you put these in, first time round, you want to give them a little bit of lubrication just to keep them working smoothly. They are a really tight fit um, so you do need them working smoothly. So a bit of GT85, brush head, positive connection there, you don't want anything disappearing up the chimney. And uh, with the baffle off, this should go in nice and easily. So we've got the um, plastic sheeting up, only a bit of simple brown packing tape around the edge, not a complete seal, I might be proven to be over optimistic about how good a job that's going to do in keeping the dust levels down but we'll we'll find out and I'll learn from that. Um, the drill I'll be using is basically the only one I had to hand, it's a 650 watt, it is a uh, variable speed but to be perfectly honest it is probably somewhat overpowered so if you're using an electric drill um, you've got to be mindful that these are nylon rods, if you've got bends in your chimneys you can overstress them and basically damage them through heat if you over use an overpowered drill. So I'll be doing this very uh, cautiously 
Um, basically, I think probably what I'll do is I'll just sort of feather the trigger, just there. keep it spinning. Um, two lessons learned so far. Much easier just to put the, uh, the chuck connector in the chuck before you've attached it to a rod, because then you can have full access to the, uh, to the key positions. Probably obvious. Second lesson, these little uh, studs are really hard to operate with your finger. Um, but the Allen key you get with the kit is perfect, just to push them in. Okay, let's get the second rod up the chimney. The first one went up incredibly easily, um, which makes me wonder whether I want to cut the bristles or not. Right, so gentle um, speed, sort of feathering the... Uh, the, the eight one meter rods up there. Um, I bought a 12 meter pack. You can buy eight, 10 or 12. I did wonder whether eight could do it because we were just a two story 1970s house. Probably each floor is about sort of two and a half meters. Then you've got the roof space. I thought eight meters might have just about do it, but I thought if I went for a 12 meter pack, I could lend it to people who have different houses. Um, and also, I definitely have enough to do my house. So we've just got the eighth metre up there. Um, I'm going to pop outside and see if it's come out of the cowl or whether I can see it because I don't want to knock the cowl off the roof. Um, that would be bad. Um, one interesting point is that probably after about five metres worth you could get a lot more dust coming down. Uh, so that seems to be where all the the pollutants and creosote or whatever it is, dust and debris is. Um, at that point, I did suddenly regret not making a slightly better job of this because some dust has escaped in the room. So let's have a look outside. If there's anything to show, I'll uh, take the camera out. If not, we'll so put another nothing rod to see up. outside. So we're going to push up for the ninth meter. Um, I'm becoming more cautious because, as I say, I really don't want to knock the cowl off. I think we might be there. But if you look in the middle of the screen there, the left hand cowl um, between the sort of the louvers on it or whatever you call it, you can just pick out the orange filaments. Um, so obviously that cowl's pretty well on up there because I gave it a good old push, but it's definitely up at the top. So it's time to start so pulling it back top. out. Um, if you had reverse on your drill, it'd be a really good time to. Uh, to use that now because you can spin it the other way and pick up any of the dust and debris that you've missed on the way out. Unfortunately I don't. Um, ideally you'd be using a well powered uh, cordless um, but that's not what I had at hand immediately. So let's get this out and uh, as I said the dust sheet goes back for a good couple of meters and this is when it really comes into its own um, because you're going to be pulling out dirty rods now. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and I know how far up I can go. I think I've got a bit more confidence in the system and I know I'm not going to damage the liner now. So as I take each rod out, I'm going to give it a quick whiz up and back along its length on each one, uh, just to give it a proper old scrubbing up there. So we've got the last piece with the uh, filament head in there now. Um, so I think it's time to do the big reveal and see what's gone on behind the screen. There's your filament head, we'll take that out carefully there. Quite a lot of unpleasant debris there, not quite as much as I'd anticipated. Um, I guess I grew up with a, an open coal fire which was really filthy. Um, but, something to do every season and uh, we'll have a little tidy up and get that burning. I must say the hardest bit of this was removing the cowl. Almost so lost a knuckle doing that. The first fire of the year on the go there, just burning off some uh, softwood scraps from some building work we were having done earlier in the year. Um, once they're done, we'll get the, uh, the nice hardwood in and uh, get ready for the winter months. So this was incredibly easy. Um, probably half an hour job now that I know how to do it. Um, obviously the first time up 
I wasn't quite sure how long the chimney was. Now I know nine rods will do it. Um, not sure if I'll cut the filaments on this. Um, I'm pretty certain my flue is only um, sort of a six or eight inch diameter, but um, it's probably, well, I found no need or no unnecessary resistance putting that up there. So I might keep that full length, um, just to make it more useful if I ever want to lend it to anyone really. Um, one thing I did sort of reflect on is, you know, this drill wasn't really um, ideal for the job. The speed wasn't awfully controllable. I think it had the right amount of power. Um, obviously, your, your, the load on the drill is quite high. You've got several rods up there, um, but they're able to adjust the speed um, more sensitively and also have a reverse so you can spin it the opposite way down the chimney, I think it would be really good. So yeah, as I say, half an hour job, um, not too messy, uh, there's a point at which I sort of slightly regretted not putting more tape around the uh, the sheet, but actually having had a dust round, not much really got out at all. So I will put a link below to where I picked this up. Um, it's distributed by a company called Sourced For You. Um, they've got Amazon presence. I think they also sell through eBay as well as their own web page. Um, I'll put up a link to one or two of those things. This pack, um, 12 meters, was around 60 pounds. Exactly the same price as someone was going to charge me to come out and do the job themselves. So I think it's paid for itself in the first session. It'll certainly pay for itself in a couple of years time, that's for sure. Um, so yeah, I think really easy to use. Um, probably lots more to learn about how to get the best out of it. Uh, I was wondering about whether I could shove uh, the end of the hoover into the uh, behind the sheeting just to pick up any dust as it came down. Maybe that's something you'd like to do. Um, but yeah, well hopefully that's been a useful review. Um, if you were just wondering on about how to do a DIY job of cleaning your chimney or indeed you'd seen this product but hadn't seen it in use, um, I hope that's of some use. Um, a bit of a departure from my channel, but do check the channel out. We might share some other common interests. Um, I generally do reviews of products, um, footwear, uh, denim, everyday carry, knives, um, fountain pens, that sort of stuff. Um, but do check out the channel if you like this video, if you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up. And uh, I'd love it if you subscribed. Okay, well I hope that's useful, and I'll see you for the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.